from Bobby Orson to the people who's in Manhattan Beach. You guys are groovy. How do you prove you're a man? If you live in Dogtown, Los Angeles, you ride a skateboard. It was different in the 60s and 70s because being as competitive as we were, we had a lot of territorial instinct. If people came into our territory, they weren't allowed. And that's why they call it Dogtown, because you're dealing with a pack of dogs that are very ambitious and competitive. Me especially, I was very aggressive and very competitive at a very young age. And I made a lot of enemies as well as friends. one of the first companies to actually make a board that you could shape with concave and a kick tip. And this was the beginning of the company uh, Alba. And I was only 19 years old when I started it. As an entrepreneur, I learned very quickly that this gave me a lot more freedom, but it also gave me an opportunity to promote myself. So we started to run a lot of ads for my skateboard company that had nothing to do with skateboard, kind of like uh, the covers of records or, or fashion, fashion shoots. It was no longer a generic skateboarding photograph that you had to use to advertise your product. That was the beginning for me, something new and different. pictures of us skating the perfect way and skateboarding to find the perfect way for us we had to go into other people's yards because all of the empty pools and everything that we skateboard on nowadays is just a concrete way that's all it is and so we were always looking for the perfect way so we looked for it I still look for it see the thing that's bitching about skateboarding is the wave stays the same all the time it's always there it's permanent It all starts with the fundamentals, which are still important to me. And that was to go fast, to control the board on the lip, and eventually the compulsory moves to get us from flat ground to the air. My life has changed immensely to the point of where I don't make the same mistakes I made when I was a kid. My father was like my hero, you know, my mentor at a very young age. He told me when I started as a professional skateboarder that there was no future in it. He came from an old school place of like, if you don't work, you don't get the rewards and people don't respect you. So that made me angry at him, you know? And I have to say that I love my father. You know, he just died a few years ago and we were at peace with each other. But the bottom line with my dad is my ambition a lot of times fell to the right and would become greed. So I got a little bit greedy at a young age. I wanted more, more money, more drugs, more chicks, more cars, more traveling, more, 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 more. So for me, my whole life was angry at my dad. So what happened was he became old. He was very feeble. He was weak and he was afraid. And I was there for my father and I told him, I'm here for you and this is the end. And as you come near the end, I want you to know that you can have peace and that there's nothing negative between you and I and that I love you no matter what. So the bottom line is for me, it's another beautiful day and, and to be able to be with you guys and eventually go and skate a skateboard park I've never skated before. This is all part of the adventure. The adventure of life is a beautiful adventure if you know how to receive it. Skateboarding saved my life. And surfing, it comes right into play with my with my sobriety. I've been sober uh, tomorrow. I'll be celebrating nine years, and it teaches me a lot about who I am. My perception gets clearer. I have clarity in my life, and I have peace. And that's all that matters, bro. Wow. I like the second session was better. For me.